This right here is the smallest genus of python in the entire world. So today let's go over the top five smallest snakes that actually make great pets. My name's Adam, this is Jimmy, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Before we get in the list, disclaimer, all of these animals, all of these snakes are not the smallest snakes in the world. There's going to be no, you know, ring neck snakes or anything like that because they don't make great pets, no blind snakes. We're talking about the smallest snakes that thrive in captivity and you'll probably enjoy keeping. So start it off, number five, Antaresia. I don't normally get into genuses and super scientific, but there are four species in the Antaresia family, Stinson's pythons, anthill pythons, children's pythons, and this right here is a spotted python. So the reason that I break it down like that is because they're all kind of the same size. They all look very similar. This is a spotted python, so the largest of the Antaresia genus. But when I say largest, I mean, it's not a big snake. These guys get to maybe four feet. And of course, these guys are from Australia. So if you're Australian, you're thinking, well, everybody knows Antaresia. I got a children's python as my first snake. Well, here in North America, and definitely in parts of the UK as well, these guys aren't super duper popular at all but they should be i mean if you like something that's maybe a little bit smaller than a ball python has lots of personality is semi-arboreal you can see i'm trying to get to the highest point which is this microphone up here uh, they're just a little bit more fun in my opinion and i think that they're fantastic easy to care for the enclosures don't need to be super big so if you had one that was say like a four foot by two foot type of enclosure four foot by two foot by two foot it's enough space for them to get up you could always give them more height if you want enough space for them to stretch out and they're gonna be able to thermoregulate in that area and keeping the humidity is pretty easy as well. So they're almost like the perfect snake. In my opinion, these guys are going to gain popularity because if you're looking for something that is not intimidating because you're newer to snakes or your family's newer and won't let you get anything intimidating and you want something that has a nice type of behavior inquisitiveness type thing that eats really well on rodents right away, but is still impressive enough that it doesn't look kind of dinky looking. I mean, what else would you want besides something like this? This is, in my opinion, one of the most perfect snakes. Why is it not higher on the list? Simply because everything on the list is smaller than this. So let's move on. Number four, Kenyan sand boas. Now, most sand boas are pretty darn small. Kenyan sand boas are probably the most prominent or easiest to be found. They're not super expensive at all. They're pretty cheap, in fact. I saw one today on our local classified site, Kijiji, for 100 bucks with the enclosure. And they have a bunch of morphs. So if you want, you know, an anery one, or if you want one that's an uh, albino, or there's a bunch of other ones as well, some absolutely gorgeous ones. Uh, the reason that they're so popular is because they're small. One and a half to just under three feet is basically where you're going to find these guys. So... They're kind of a perfect size for someone who wants something really small. And they're in the boa family. People love boas. They do kind of act like boas the way that they eat. They are a little bit smaller, or a heck of a lot smaller than most boas that you know. But, I mean, they do still give live birth. So they're still a boa, after all. And they've got these derpy little faces with the eyes on top of their heads. And they stay buried in the sand. Which is kind of why I've got them so low on the list. They're smaller than these guys, which in my opinion are kind of a perfect snake. But, Kenyan sand boas... If you'd like to look at a layer of sand in a tank for most of your time owning a snake, Kenyan Sambos are right for you. They spend most of their time, and I know there's anomalies, there's going to be people in the comment section. My Kenyan Sambo is never in the sand. It actually has a tricycle and rides around the enclosure. Like, I, I get it. Some are not like this, but from my experience, from people I know who have them, they are kind of the boringest snake that they have. But if you get them out to handle them, they're really fun to handle because they'll grip onto you. They do kind of strike sideways, which is really interesting. Uh, they're from Kenya and surrounding area. Yes, that's why they're called Kenyan sand boas. And just for fun, this is a picture of an Arabian sand boa because derpy derpy derp. And like everything else on the list, if you want a Kenyan sand boa, you're going to have something that has a very small enclosure. Not very small, but small enough that it doesn't take up a, a lot of room or a lot of money to outfit. You can use mostly sand as a substrate. I prefer a mixture of uh, sand and other uh, different type like eco earth and things like that. But either way, it's really easy. They eat well. They're small. Got a pretty good attitude most of the time. Kenyan sand boas are kind of awesome. Number three on the list, a squirmy little worm I can barely keep under control. 
hognose snakes. Now you guys know I do a lot of hognose content. This was kind of a slower eater to start, which is why it's so small still. In comparison, look at this monster right here. So it's, they just grow a different, okay, why are they awesome? These guys here are North American Colubrid. They are rear fang venomous, so I am handling them free handle, but if you're one of those people that wants to wear gloves, I'm gonna put you back now, because you're too squirmy. If you wanna wear gloves like this, it doesn't make you a wuss. I totally get it. Some people have different reactions to these animals. These guys are only gonna get to three feet if you get a big female. We're talking between like a foot and a half to just under three feet. This is Ekans, my biggest female. She's just under, I think she's like two foot nine inches, something like that. So they can get to a uh, decent size beefy wise, like the, the girth. Um, Ekans pumped out a bunch of eggs two months ago, so she's not quite as beefy as she was. But if you saw a couple months ago when she was full of eggs, it looked like a sausage casing that was full, like overstuffed with meat. <laughs> these guys are absolutely fantastic. They're derpy as can be. They've got these derpy little faces with the upturned snouts. Their bodies are weird too because they're not constrictors. They're rear fang venomous, so that's how they kill their prey, pop toads or whatever. So these guys don't need to constrict their prey and they're not arboreal. So they don't have a body that holds on to you. Like with my buddy Jimmy there, semi-arboreal python holds on to me. With that snake that I was just holding, it just kind of kept like almost falling. It fell on my lap, right? When I was trying to film this. So they are an actively being, actively being held. You have to be active when you hold them. Otherwise you will drop them, especially if they're babies like that who are too squirmy. Now my recommendation for these guys is a 20 gallon minimum. Uh, for their entire life and some females get big enough that I like to put them in something like a 40 gallon or something close to that size Now it just depends. It's up to you. They do like to burrow. So the substrate I mean aspen substrate is perfect So it just depends how you want to do it now if there is a drawback they are picky as babies now I had nine babies this year three of them I still need to scent the food in order for them to eat so that is the drawback but if you get yourself a western hognose snake we're talking about westerns by the way it should have been in the title there because there are easterns and there are tricolors and things like that but westerns is what I've got experience with and the most common and the easiest to get eating on rodents so but if you get one from a breeder they would have already done the work for you got them on rodents if they ever go off again well we've done videos about how to get your snake to eat again. Hognose snakes, number three on the list. I know if you've been watching for a while, you thought they were number one, two to the left. Number two on the list is a very unique animal, egg eating snakes. Now egg eating snakes are kind of weird looking. They look different, they act different, they only eat eggs, which is why they're called African egg eating snakes. And they've got no teeth, so that's very unique, which means that they can't bite you. They'll try, like they will kind of go at you with an open mouth, but they don't, have teeth to bite you with. Instead, they take an egg appropriately sized, finch egg, quail egg, whatever, depending on the size of the snake. They put it in their mouth. They crunch it up with these kind of uh, vertebrae projections, projections on their vertebrae in their mouth. So it goes into like here, like if it's a snake's a human, then like this far basically. And then sucks out the yolk, uh, the egg white, whatever else is in an egg. I'm not an egg expert. And then they spit out the shell. That's it, they ate one thing. So if you've got a constant supply of finch eggs, button quail eggs, and then when they get to adults, eggs from quails, you're good. Very easy, very simple. I mean, it's just the difficulty here is, uh, do you have a supply of these eggs? Which is the reason I don't have one. I can't find finch eggs. Um, I've asked basically every one of the local pet stores. I can't find a supply, which is why I don't have them. But they're awesome because their temperament, they can be tamed down. And even if they're not tame, they're not going to be sinking their teeth into you because they don't have any. So yeah, I mean, they're kind of a great snake and they're small, like everything else in the list. They'll get two to two and a half feet, something like that. Uh, they don't have a super big body. I mean, it looks kind of funny when they're eating eggs. We've all seen this meme here. This is an egg eating snake. This is what this is. So one of the coolest snakes that you can find, they can live their whole life basically in a 20 gallon, which goes for this Kenyan Sandbows as well. These guys are gonna need something more like a four foot by two foot by two foot, something like that. And I think with that, we can move on to number one. Okay, number one, my opinion, the coolest small snake that there is, and one that I do not own because in this area, they're hard, okay, get to the point, what is it? Rosy boas. Everybody has been calling for it. Dude, you gotta talk about rosy boas. Rosy boas are awesome, you gotta talk about them. And you're right, I do gotta talk about them. I was hoping I could find one. There are very few reptiles left in my list that I need for my personal collection. And when I say need, I mean just really, really want. Rosy boas are at the top of that list. I love boas, but I love smaller snakes. Don't get me wrong, I love my girl Franny. 
I love Marowak. I love bigger boas, but I also like small snakes or kind of snakes that are the perfect size for what my opinion is of the perfect size. Rosy boas being only two or three feet, in my opinion, kind of perfect. I love the fact that I get a ball python, right? So I've got a ball python, which is about four and a half feet. They can get all the way up to six if it's a giant, giant female. And then you've got, say these guys, a little bit smaller, Antaresia, four feet. And then if you want something smaller, still acts snaky like a boa would, for example, and kind of looks like a boa and has a beautiful pattern, a rosy boa. They've got a great temperament most of the time. You cannot go in my mouth. And they're small, so they're not super intimidating. They also have this really strong body, so when they hold on to you, they hold on to you for real. And this is a North American uh, species, so there's only two species of North American boas that I know about. Correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. Rosy boas and rubber boas. And the reason rubber bows aren't on the list, they are almost impossible to find. Rosy bows are easier to find, they're way easier to breed. Another live bearing snake, by the way. So, I don't know, I just think that these guys kind of fit. And I know that it's kind of weird for me to say that about an animal I don't actually have, uh, but I do know people who have them, and I'm kind of like the last one of my group of friends not to have one. I'm gonna fix that. I just gotta find one. If you know someone in Southern Ontario that breeds rosy boas, let me know. I'd love to get one and not have to worry about paperwork getting across the border. And like the hognose snakes and the Kenyan sand boas, there are quite a few morphs. I know we passed them already, but Antaresia, unless you live in Australia, you're not really gonna find morphs in North America. I mean, they don't export their animals. We've talked about this in other videos. So I think really with rosy boa, it's kind of got everything you want in a small snake great temperament, they don't need a ton of space, they eat really, really well, they eat like boas, right? Boas eat like boas, and they've got uh, these morphs, so they're kind of the perfect snake in my opinion. Can't wait to get one, again, comment section. Throw it down there if you've got one or you know someone who has one, sorta of, kinda of locally, I'd love to have one. So there you go. Those are your top five super tiny smallest snakes that make great pets. What do you think? Is there something on the list that doesn't belong? Did I forget something? What would your top five have been? Throw that in the comments section. As always, the reason I do these videos is because you guys ask for them in the comments section. So that's why I put it down there. And of course, I talked about cage sizes for all of these animals. If you need a wicked top of the line enclosure, PVC enclosure, my friends at Cages will hook you up. Click the link in the description. It lets them know that I sent you. Great prices, I stand behind these products. I can't do a video without saying the most ridiculous thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are unbelievable. You're commenting on videos like four seconds after I post them. You get to see the videos a couple days early, some extra content. You get to know about animals in my collection that I haven't told anybody about yet. If you like discounts on the merch, if you're interested in the merch, we got that too. And of course, if you haven't already, join the Discord. It's free. It's fun. You guys make me laugh so hard all the time, every day. Love it. Absolutely. Okay. Have we plugged everything? Have we plugged everything? Hit subscribe. All right. See you on Thursday.